Good morning, hello, and welcome to our 51st Holding Space for Self and Others webinar. It's lovely to have you here today, and I'm really looking forward to introducing you in just a moment to our wonderful presenter for today. So the topic of today's webinar is the power of volunteering, pathway to a successful career. So whether you're at the beginning stages of your career or more advanced in it, Mara Leone is going to be presenting today some ideas and some reasons that you might want to be thinking about volunteering in small or large ways to progress your career. So really looking forward to introducing her in just a moment. My name is Jackie Short. I'm the Director of Sydney Centre for Creative Change, and I'm really excited to be hosting and bringing you these free webinars once every other month to get ideas and strategies and some solutions and skills to be able to better hold space for yourself and others that you work with in the mental health professions. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I come to you from today, the Eora people of the Gadigal Nation, and pay our collective respects to Indigenous elders past, present and emerging around this beautiful wide land that we all find ourselves on. So welcome one and all, whoever you are, wherever you're coming in from today, it's lovely to see you here. It's lovely to see you with your cameras on so you can see each other and directly participate in some of the experiential exercises we'll also have an opportunity to do today, including some breakout rooms a little bit later on. So as I mentioned, this is our 51st of our free webinars. And if you wanted to access any of the other ones, they're all available on our website for you. So this webinar today is on the power of volunteering pathway to a successful career. Mara is a qualified art therapist and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about herself in just a moment. But wanted to share initially with you that she is working in a variety of organizational sectors and through her own company, Healing Colors, Mara runs high quality outcome based workshops for a variety of organizational sectors. Her clients include government organizations, hospitals, mental health facilities, disability organisations, aged care, health retreats and festivals. So she's obviously across a lot of industries and has a lot of wisdom to share with us today about getting into any of those. Mara is the Access and Inclusion Coordinator for Sculptures by the Sea, which anyone on the Eastern Seaboard would certainly know about and anyone living in Sydney hopefully has visited in October and also a guide at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Mara believes that a major key to opening the door to a successful career is volunteering. As a mentor and coach to art therapists, Mara uses the lessons gained from her own personal experiences to inspire others to reach their dreams. Mara's presentations are highly energizing and inspirational with practical information to help shine a light on the pathway towards a successful career. And this is what we're going to have the advantage of experiencing right now. So, Welcome, Mara. Great to have you here. Thank you, Jackie. Hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, I acknowledge you for showing up today, and it's very clear that by coming here, you are committed to your career and your learning. So that is fantastic. Good on you. So as Jackie said, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself, but actually, sorry, before I do that, I'm going to say that you may like to have a pen and paper of, available to you or take notes on the computer. You might want to take a few notes. Um, so I'll just give you a moment to prepare for that. And I'm just going to reiterate that. Um, so I'm a qualified art therapist. I graduated about six years ago from the College of Complementary Medicine. And as Jackie said, I have my own business called Healing Colors and that I work um, in many organizational settings, primarily working with groups and primarily running art therapy workshops. Um, and over the years, I've built a solid business and used my education and training to um, build the successful business and what I consider to be, you know, at the top of my game. I've, I've done a lot of great things. Um, and I have um, also been a mentor to art therapy students I've been a guest speaker at conferences for the College of Complementary Medicine and conducted seminars on how to build a successful art therapy career uh, for established and emerging art therapists. Um, and over the years, I've also had many students do placement and volunteering with me. 
And probably the most important thing that I want to say um, is that, um, and the reason why I was inspired to run this workshop for you is because 90% of my paid work has actually come from either directly or indirectly from volunteering. So that's a really big chunk of my paid work came from that. That's why I see it as, you know, such a powerhouse and a critical part of uh, building your career. So I hope that my stories will inspire you and that you will learn more about how you can add that into your life to build your career. This workshop is going to be structured around four lessons that I have learned. And with every lesson that I share, I will um, tell you some personal examples of what happened to me. I will explain how they happened and how I personally played a role in making things happen and uh, offer you some inspiration on how you can build your career with adding volunteering to the mix. So let's get some context before we begin. Um, across Australia, it's estimated that over 5 million people volunteered through an organization or group or 20, in 2020. That was from Volunteering Australia. That means that one quarter of people aged 15 years and over have volunteered. And that's a huge number, a quarter of the country. So, you know, why do people volunteer, right? There's many reasons why people uh, choose to volunteer and many benefits. Um, and research shows us that the majority of people who volunteer do it for personal satisfaction. They do it to do something worthwhile and to make their life count. And this is the ultimate blessing of volunteering. And it goes without saying that, you know, the secret to happiness is to be of service. And I know that you probably already know that because you've chosen a career in the front lines of helping people. And our work is very satisfying and our work feeds the soul. But Although this is the best benefit of volunteering, I'd like to invite you to reframe your thinking and see volunteering in a different way, okay? So I'd like you to see volunteering as a free education, as an opportunity to learn and grow, to see volunteering as a training ground where you can develop confidence, uh, a place where you can build your skills, and a place to make valuable connections. So most people volunteer for personal satisfaction, but statistics also show that about 20% of people volunteer to learn and grow and gain skills and training. And that's how I'd like you to see it from now on. Um, and we live in a country where there are so many opportunities to volunteer and it's a pathway to building your career. Uh, so it's, it's really important to open your mind to this and the possibility and think about how you can add, you personally can add volunteering into your mix to build your career. So with that in mind and understanding that, um, let's begin with lesson one, right? So lesson one is to choose volunteer roles that are aligned with your career goals. So that's going to require you to get clear on where you want to go and use volunteering to help you get there. So step number one is to get clear on your career goals. And, you know, sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes we just choose things, but if you uh, really understand where you wanna go, you might wanna look at it like, where do I wanna be in one year's time in my career? Where do I wanna be in three years time? Where do I wanna be in five years time? When you really get clear on that, then you can move in that direction. And it's really important in your career, but even in your life, you know, like to just think about where do I wanna go? And all of your decisions will then be aligned with the achievement of your, your direction. So once you're clear, you can begin to scout out organizations that you're interested in, that you can join immediately, or an organization that can provide you with 
a stepping stone towards your ultimate goal. So it might not be that you start off, you know, right where you want to be in five years. You you might want to work your way up there. Um, and I know that in this room, there are many professions and uh, your opportunities will vary. You know, I'm coming from being an art therapist. I'm not sure what you do, but in your mind, you will work out, you know, the places that you can go to build your own career based on your profession. And, and so with a clear understanding, right, of understanding your overarching goals and your hopes and dreams, it's important to also choose your volunteering wisely, always with that goal in mind, and this will lead you to the right place. When you know where you want to go, then you will be selective of where you choose to spend your time because, you know, time is precious and you want to maximize your learning and your opportunities. Okay, has everybody got all that so far? Cool, okay. So I'm gonna share my experience and my goals now, my example. When I began my journey as an art therapist, uh, my goal was to build my skill set to work with a diverse amount of people. So that was my goal. I wanted to work with mental health clients, with people living with disability. I wanted to work in a hospital set setting. I wanted to work in aged care. I wanted to work with young people. I wanted to work with lonely and isolated people, disadvantaged people. I wanted to understand art therapy in a corporate setting and with the general public. So what I did was I went on a mission to run free workshops in all of these environments. And I still do this from time to time. And I'm doing this today in this webinar um, because doing this for me is um, a challenge and, and, and I'm gonna be growing through this experience. So for me at the beginning, my overarching goal was to gain a deep understanding of how art therapy translated in many different sectors with the ultimate goal of being a high quality, well-rounded art therapist. And I, I really, what I wanted to do is I wanted to hone my skills. I wanted to get comfortable in my own skin as an art therapist at the beginning of my career when I was graduating. So uh, there were also times when I chose um, volunteering opportunities for the benefit of my resume. Okay, so that's another point that I want to make. Sometimes you might want to choose an organization that will help you because it, it, it'll be on your resume, right? And you can use that for potential employers. So when I became clear that my goal was to become a high quality art therapist, um, there were times that I chose organizations deliberately that were established, well-known organizations. For example, I ran a couple of uh, retreats at Alicia Health Retreat, which is a wellness retreat in the Hunter Valley. I had been going there for many years. I saw it as this ultimate place and I approached them and ran some free sessions there. And this, of course, um, I didn't have any experience in health retreats and, it, and people know about this place, so it looked good on my resume, right? I did some volunteering at Headspace with Youth Mental Health. I ran a six week program with them as a volunteer. And of course, everybody knows Headspace and it it's a good solid place to have on your resume. And I also did that with Royal Rehab. So by volunteering in these places, I was able to use these names to elevate my professional status to prospective employers. So sometimes, you know, you might wanna choose um, to volunteer for a period of time in places like this because it will elevate um, your professional um, status to prospective employers. Um, so these are, these three places are a few, very few of the institutions that I've never gotten paid in. I only volunteered in, but I could still use that experience to move towards my uh, career goals, right? Um, at, which is, um, putting them on my resume. So for you, with your goal firmly in mind, uh, you can choose where you want to volunteer for other reasons that are beneficial 
to achieving that goal. So once you know that goal, you can choose organizations aligned with that. So at this point, um, and telling you all of those things, I just like you to pause for a moment and just take a breath and maybe write down some of your goals. And I know that, you know, this is something that takes time. We only have an hour, but just maybe do a little bit of automatic writing and begin the process of writing down, you know, what are your goals in your career? What are some of the things that you want to achieve? Where do you want to go? I'll just give you a minute to do that. And I would just like you to know that at the end of this workshop, we're going to have a little breakout room where you can explore and discuss some organizations that you might approach to volunteer in that are aligned with your personal goals with others in your breakout room if you choose to, to go into a breakout room. Okay, so that was lesson one, right? Be clear about your goals. Now I'm going to tell you lesson two. And lesson two is to use volunteering as a training ground, okay? When I graduated from college, I was very excited to be an art therapist, but I actually had no idea how to translate what I learned in school into the workplace, and, and I was scared. So I'm not sure how it is for you or how it was for you, but maybe you've had that experience too. Um, because often uh, there's a disconnect between academia and the real world. And we need to uh, navigate through that uh, with all of those insecurities and fears, right? So this is where volunteering in an organization aligned with your goals can help create the bridge between academia and the workplace. And this is an ideal place to start. So... Um, maybe you're an established practitioner and volunteering can provide you with opportunities to enter into new situations that challenge you, right? So and that is something that, you know, I'm doing today. So I'm in a new, uh, I'm an established practitioner in a new situation that is being challenged right now, delivering this workshop to you. It might be somewhere where you might practice your skills on a different type of clientele or uh, somewhere that you could learn and grow in a lateral way, right? So as an established practitioner, there are many more benefits that you know I can discuss with you in upcoming lessons as well. But for newbies, it's uh, using volunteering as a training ground is fantastic. And for new practitioners, it's a place to practice your skills so as a volunteer, you can practice your skills and you can gain valuable experience day in and day out. And it's a training ground for experience, a free training ground. And the more that we practice, the more confident we become. So, and this also relates to the imposter syndrome. And I'm not sure if you've ever experienced that or if you're a newbie and you're experiencing that at the, at the moment. So this is um, a syndrome where you have feelings of fear and inadequacy, and they often come up at the beginning of a career. Um, and this can happen when you don't have confidence that comes from experience. So you'd probably agree with me that if you're getting paid to deliver, there is an added stress uh, to deliver a quality service right at the beginning, and that might take months to you know, achieve that. So for anyone uh, feeling imposter syndrome, the remedy is time and experience, day in and day out, practicing your skills. And that just goes away with experience. So volunteering is a great training ground to build confidence. And you know, I'll just share with you my experience as a new graduate. I said initially that I had no idea how to translate my education in the real world. And how I dealt with that was you know, taking baby steps. So I started out small in places where I could practice my skills and I didn't feel too intimidated. And for me, that was in aged care facilities. So um, what happened for me 
was that in the final months of my schooling with graduation impending, uh, I volunteered at a local Italian nursing home running painting classes. <clears throat> so this wasn't intimidating to me. You know, I'm with elderly people. They're so grateful that I'm there. So to me, it was like the ideal place to start out. And I volunteered in the facility's own program. And all I had to do was put out some paints and set up the table and be with the residents and clean up the mess in the end. So I volunteered there for five months. And during this time, I practiced being in front of an audience, connecting with the residents, moving around the table, understanding how long things took, learning how to set up my spaces efficiently, and most of all, understanding how a creative program works in a nursing home through that volunteer experience. But the blessing came as by the time I graduated, this nursing home had just completed the construction of a brand new state of the art dementia facility. And the then well-being manager asked me if I'd like to be the art therapist in this new facility. And this was the first paid job I ever got in art therapy. It was a solid, well-paying, consistent job, and I am still there today. So eventually at Scalabrini Dementia Village, I built a strong enough art therapy program, which led me also to taking on many students doing their placement with me and volunteering with me and you know, paying it forward. And so I became then the organization in helping others as a training ground. So the point that I want to make there is that a volunteering position can turn into paid work, right? It can offer you the opportunity for that. And again, I'd like you just to take a breath for a moment and think about your own career and think about um, if volunteering can be a training ground for you in aspects of your career. Can a volunteering role help you to build confidence can it help you to build your skill set? Can a volunteering position in a organization that is aligned with your goals help you to learn and grow? Is there any volunteering position out there that can challenge you that you might move into that can help you to move closer to your hopes and dreams and your goals? So that's another thing to think about. So is everybody good with that? The first two lessons, everybody's cool? Okay, I'm not going too fast. It's all good, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, all right. I'm moving on to lesson three. And lesson three is to understand the processional effect of volunteering. So everything you do and everywhere you go, there are possibilities that lie hidden. And once you really understand and embrace that, you will see them and you can then take proactive action towards them for the achievement of your goals. I'm going to give you a very valuable tip. In your volunteer position, keep your eyes and ears open to the, all the possibilities. And this means be aware of the people around you that may be a valuable connection. And be aware of the opportunities that lie around you. It is about opening your eyes and ears to all the hidden possibilities. And that is something that you should just live by in everything that you do when you're wanting to achieve your goals, right? So when you're in your volunteer position in that space, I'd like you to also share your hopes and dreams with other people. I'd like you to also ask questions and learn. I'd like you to also seek people who inspire you and can serve as mentors to you. 
So this is taking proactive action. It's going to require you to not only choose the right place, but also to be proactive about building your career and seeing everything around you. In my experience, um, the most valuable volunteering role I ever had uh, was working in an arts and health program at the RPA hospital, uh, a program called Artery. And we delivered art um, to patients bedside. And then I moved on in the same program to the um, Chris O'Brien Lifehouse Cancer Hospital. And we would deliver art therapy, um, art experiences to people while they were receiving chemotherapy and had workshops. It was amazing. I learned so much. And I was part of a team. And there I met many people. I made lots of connections with people that were doing great things and we were doing great work there. I was there for five years. Um, and one of my leaders throughout my time there was also involved at Sculpture by the Sea. So she mentioned that to me one day when we were together and she was the head of the Access and Inclusion Program. And this program takes people who live with disability on tours of the sculptures during the exhibition. It's an amazing program, free program. And when I heard this, of course, my ears perked up and I was really interested and excited about Sculpture by the Sea because I have gone there many times and I have such beautiful memories of taking my son out of school when he was in primary school and taking him to Sculpture by the Sea. And I could think of nothing better than to um, volunteer there and to learn and grow and do something different to expand my skill set. So I approached my leader. So it took me, me, you know, I was proactive in approaching my leader. So it's going to take, you know, you have to be proactive when you see an opportunity. And I approached her with, you know, great interest and passion. And I told her I'd love to work at Sculpture by the Sea. So she, you know, feeling that vibe and, you know, wanting to, you know, help me out. She put my name forward as a guide. I'd never been a guide before, so it was a challenge to learn and grow and build my skill set. And um, I was ready to volunteer for two weeks, but she actually recommended me to be a paid guide. There was two positions as paid guides, and she recommended me. So this became my first job at Sculpture by the Sea, and I have been there for three years. I eventually took over her job and became the Access and Inclusion Coordinator and last year at Sculpture by the Sea Bondi, um, I was the head of the Tactile Tours program and I had a team of 12 volunteer guides and we had 500 visitors come through our program. So this is a you know, big achievement that came from a volunteering opportunity and from me asking. So it's really important to ask, see the hidden gems that are there and ask, make connections and see the opportunities. So um, it's really important that you see them and you take proactive steps in every opportunity, right? So um, also I wanna share that there is a processional effect in opportunities that lie in the future with volunteering. So sometimes the opportunities are in lag and they might not show up years later. The important thing is, that you are participating, that you are learning, that you are growing and open to all the possibilities that may arise in front of you. Uh, the more you put yourself out there, the more possibilities will show up in your life. And so as part of this lesson, I'd like to share with you a volunteer position that took three years to become a paid work for me. Um, and this was, um, my very, very first placement that I did um, in my college, we had to do a hundred hours of placement. And I, this was my first one. I approached a local nursing home. Again, I wasn't intimidated. This is a good space for me to start. And I offered a six week free program for their residents. <clears throat> and I delivered this program. And by the end, you know, I was just starting out. I was really hoping and praying, fingers crossed, that they would hire me, but they didn't. Um, I was shocked, but they didn't. Um, and it took three years for them to call me and ask me to become their resident art therapist. So <clears throat> the point that I want to make here is 
that when you volunteer, know that you know every position you hold may bring something forward in the future. And that it's important to understand that volunteering has professional effects that may take time to eventuate. You might also like to proactively create your own volunteering position. So I'm not sure uh, if there is scope within your own profession to do this, because I'm not sure what your profession is, but I'd like you to think about it. And I'd like you to think about if there is a way that you can approach organizations with a free offering, you personally, not going into an established volunteering position, but for you to create your own volunteering position. And this might be for a special event or a limited time, right? A limited time program, a, a three week program that you offer for free. And for example, it might be something that you would could tie in with for say International Women's Day or Carers Week or the Seniors Festival or definitely the Mental Health Awareness Month, which provides so many opportunities. And you could put on a one day event um, or, you know, uh, some weekly sessions for these events. And people are open to it because organizations are always looking for things. They would be happy um, to, you know, receive some free sessions or anything that you can offer them. And so by doing this, you make valuable connections and it could lead to work. Um, and it's something that you have created from scratch. So in saying all of this, you know, I'm not sure where you are in your life or what you, <clears throat> what you do, but you might have this issue of, okay, we'll look at all this great stuff with volunteering, but you know, what if I have little time, you know, what if I have a full-time job? Um, how can you squeeze it into, um, squeeze volunteering into your mix? And this is the way you can do it. You might do it you know, like, I mean, it's Sculpture by the Sea. It's a two-week gig, and you can pick the days that you come. You might come and guide for two days. Um, uh, you know, there you will learn things. You will grow. You will make connections. It might be <clears throat> being part of the um, of a festival, the Big Anxiety Festival, something like that. It doesn't have to be like um, a, a weekly thing. It can be something you do on the weekend. It can be for a limited amount of time but everything you do will help you grow and will help you to make connections. So with this lesson, I'd like to share a, a connection that led to work. Um, and it happened recently. Uh, I did, um, I volunteered to run an indigenous inspired children's art therapy session for the yes campaign, right? Remember the yes campaign that happened recently. And <clears throat> this was a session that was held at a community center by a local council office. So it was Kylia Tink's office, council office. And that was the organization that I was volunteering with. So <clears throat> it was being held in a community center. And the amazing thing about this community center is that when I first started out as an art therapist, I dreamed of running workshops in this community center because they have an amazing amount of workshops, really high quality, great people, great topics. And I thought, oh my God, I'd love to run a workshop here. This was six years ago, but I, at the time I thought, I, I'm not, just not good enough to get there yet. But we were delivering this children's workshop in the Yes campaign at this community center. And while I was doing it, they had some speakers up, we had, they had Kylia Tink and Noel Pearson talking and I was there. And the director of the community center came running up to me and said, what are you doing? I love what you're doing. Who are you? How can we collaborate together? So this became a lot, an opportunity that arose for me doing this free workshop and a connection that I made. Um, and this resulted then in me running ongoing workshops at the North Sydney Community Center. And it all began with this free workshop that I that I ran at the Yes campaign. So it's important to note here that I also proactively took um, action in these situations. 
And therefore, a key message here is that when you're in a volunteer role aligned with your career goals, always have your eyes and ears open to opportunities and take action towards the possibilities. Okay. Is everybody good? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna come up with the very last lesson. And this is really the key to how you can translate a volunteer position into a paid position. This is kind of like the secret. Remember the movie, The Secret is the secret. Okay, so the most important lesson of all for the achievement of your career goals is to practice excellence. And this lesson really is for everything that you do. To practice excellence in everything that you do. In your job, in the way that you show up in life, in everything. And this is the key to translating volunteering into paid work. So when you have a high standard People will notice you and you will shine. You will shine. So the lesson is shine like a diamond, okay? This will make you stand out from your competition, all the people around you, and it will make potential employers see the jewel that you are and want to work with you. When you volunteer in a position that aligns with your career goals, and you practice excellence, you raise your standard, you rise up from the competition, show up early, be organized, be calm, be ready to deliver, and be highly professional. And you don't have to be an employer to understand that great people are hard to find. So when they see them, they want to employ them. And this is how I translated many of my volunteer positions into work. This is what I teach art therapy students to be the best you can be and you will be rewarded for it. So that's a really important part of all of the messages. Okay, so those are my four lessons. We've come to 1040, we have about 20 minutes left. I'm going to recap all the lessons and then um, Jackie will take over and we'll go into a breakout room and just, you know, uh, marinate with all of these lessons that I've, I've, I've shared with you today. And I'm just gonna recap on everything once more. So lesson one was to choose volunteer roles aligned with your career. And this requires you to be clear on where you want to go. And this requires you to be selective of the volunteer positions you choose that are aligned with your goal. And lesson two is to use volunteering as a training ground. Use it to challenge yourself if you are an established practitioner. Use it to build your confidence if you are starting out. Use it to help you overcome the imposter syndrome, if at all you are feeling that. Lesson three is understand the processional effects of volunteering. And that is to open your eyes and ears to the connections and to take proactive steps to make things happen. It is to share your hopes and dreams with others and to seek uh, people who inspire you and can serve as mentors. And the final lesson, the most important lesson of all is to shine like a diamond. And the key to turning volunteering into paid work is to shine like a diamond. So that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you. That's pretty much my session. Thank you for listening. I hope that you um, have received some valuable information. I hope that you're inspired. 
And I hope that, you know, you have a few, um, a little bit of direction in moving forward. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Mara. That's a great presentation and lovely to share your personal examples of how volunteering has helped you progress your career along the way here too. I know there'll be some great questions and reflections based on this. I know you also had a couple of things to share with us, Mara, some final slides about yes, how people you. could be in contact with you and yeah. that will be available later as well. I'll send you those details in a follow-up email, but Mara's going to share that as well as a, a prompt for the breakout rooms that Ellie's going to put you in in just a moment. So we're going to be in groups of two or three and we'll be in those groups for around 10 minutes. And Mara's going to share with you a question prompt that you might want to take into that breakout room to think about and to share with others and to discuss for around 10 minutes. At the end of nine minutes, you'll get a countdown clock, which will count down from nine or 60 to zero. And after that minute, everyone will come back together. So there's nothing you need to do after joining the breakout room. Just um, wait until that minute and then we can all start again together. And I've got to ask a few people to reflect on what they've got out of that discussion, how it's furthered your thinking about how volunteering can work for you in terms of progressing your career. So if, uh, Mara, you'd like to share that screen now and that'll be visible in the breakout rooms as well. And after 10 minutes, we'll come back and I'll let you know how you can get a PD certificate for today as well. So that's the... Um, the slide there. What is your career goal? And what organisations do you know are aligned with your goals that can further your career? So if you just wanted to jot down those questions, if you don't happen to see this in the breakout rooms, but feel free to join now and we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Welcome back everybody and thank you for that opportunity to connect in and to share some of your thoughts and directions with others. Would anyone like to put up their hand and unmute and share with us something valuable that you got out of that presentation or even in sharing with others just now how this might have progressed your thinking about your career goals or how volunteering could work for you thanks sue love to hear from you um i was just in a group with two people and um one of them has not volunteered um as a supervisor but as a peer-to-peer um, facilitator in the group that she's involved with so I thought that was another really interesting way to to get in um, and and work with people that um, that you have share the lived experience with um, rather than coming in with different uh, skill set and different experiences to actually work with a group that you're affiliated with in a ex life experience kind of way and as a peer so I thought that was another good way to um, Get, get some experience and get connections and networks and all those things that um, Maya talked about before. Love it. Thanks, Eve. Great reflections. Anybody else want to share? An important takeaway for you. Uh, Charlene, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, I guess I'm on a different side, end of the spectrum, where I'm almost time trying to retire from counselling. Uh, and it's like you hit a certain age and they put you in this box and say, go volunteer at the Salvos. And I'm kicking those walls down going, I don't want anybody to put me in a box. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to go out quietly. I haven't come in quietly. I'm not going to go out quietly. So I, it really gave me a different mindset of those walls, they're going down quicker instead of me punching through where I'm just thinking it just like it just changed my mindset of how what I want to do, what's next. And I've always wanted to work more with women, which I did a lot of drum therapy with domestic violence, but I want to go more with women and with my humor and public speaking. And I'm just going to try to figure out what's next. So thank you, Mara. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Me too. Fantastic. I think there's a lot of people excited for you, Charlene. And I think even as you just shared, I could see three or four very vigorous heads nodding in 
agreement with how you were feeling about this, that at any age and at any stage of our career, it doesn't need to be over. And I think there's a lot of women out there that are, they, we, can, we can get stuck. We all know that, but we don't know when we're stuck till someone I mean, says yeah. something. Sorry. May I just say something to that point? Um, sorry, forgive me. Um, so when I graduated from school, I was 55 years old. And I, that, this is a time when people are like getting retrenched or get, leaving work. Like this is not the time to start a career. So I have built a really great career. I'm doing things that are just, I could only dream of. And, uh, you know, I'm 61 and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. That age did not stop me. Age does not have to stop you. Right. So I just want to say that I experienced that myself. Yeah. Can I, can I thank you for saying that, Mara, because I'm 62 and I am just about to leave my career, which has nothing to do with anything in this space and um, hopefully move towards this kind of work. Um, and, I don't, and I agree, age doesn't stop you. It's society's um, relentless um, words about, women and aging and all those things that we don't want to hear but keep coming up just keep shining like a diamond right just elevate your professionalism just honestly put your heart into everything that you do and be highly professional and you'll you can break through that okay it's thank you that's awesome thank you yeah i graduated at 56 and i turned 70 this year wow so there you go and i'm still ready to kick ass sorry <laughs> Well done, Charlene. Keep, keep smashing down those walls. That's beautiful. Excellent. Anyone else like to share anything that came? Alison, yes, lovely to hear from you. Sorry for my fingers sticking in your face all the time. It's the only way to do it. Um, yeah, something that came up in ours. I just love, Mara, your manner. And um, often when you think career and you think, you know, striving for the next thing, um, it can not align with values because I'm not naturally ambitious at all <laughs> and so it's very hard for me to even think in that future space so to see the way you talk about just share your hopes and dreams with people I can see how those conversations probably happen and how you how you share with people those things that open up those doors in a more natural way or way that I would find more natural so yeah thank you you're welcome you know, ultimately, you want to be, um, you know, living your best life. You know, ultimately, you want to make your life count. You want <clears throat> to reach your, you know, reach your your hopes and dreams, right? You want to live that life. That, and that's what it's about, right? It's not about, like, having that career. It's about self-actualization as well, right? <clears throat> Thanks, Alison. Uh, Joanna? I'd just like to say, I don't want to talk for long because I'm at that older age of the spectrum, but I'm 80 now. And what I did in a career that was not known in Australia, drama therapy, I made sure I went to every possible conference that I could. And now that I'm semi-retired, I'm being given these opportunities from people I've met at conferences all over the world to do things online. And it's just so magical. So I just wanted to say that. And sometimes it was hard to get the money together to go, but I just did it. And it's that those things that, that you're saying, Mara, about who you know as well, you know, not just what you know. Mm -hmm. And the key also is just to keep participating, keep doing things. The more you do things, the more you, possibilities come around you. If you do nothing, then the possibilities won't come. So just keep putting yourself out there. That's pretty much it. Thanks, Joanna. Any other thoughts or questions for Mara? before we move into the final stage of wrapping up for today. Desi, yes. Oh, hi, Mara. Thank you so much for today. Um, how about affordable supervision while we are volunteering? That's a question um, that comes up for me. What do you mean? Tell me more. Um, so just being able to 
literally to, to afford supervision because we're if we're in a volunteer role and we're not getting paid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess what I want to say is that you don't have to be volunteering full time, right? So you might mm. do, you, you might choose to do a volunteer role that happens on a weekend or just for a period of time. Like, for example, when I mentioned Sculpture by the Sea, that's only two weeks, right? But you mm -hmm. learn so much and you make so many connections. It doesn't have to be all the time. We have to work. We have to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you choose a volunteer position, it could be for, you, you know, you might do something for um, Seniors Week or, as I said earlier, something for Mental Health Awareness Month, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you still can work. You can still work and do some volunteering on the side. Yeah. That's yeah. Thank I, you. I, I would answer that question. Any other questions that anyone has for Mara? Feel free to either put your hand up or pop the question in the chat. I'm happy to read it out for you. Um, one here, do you get supervision through the organisation you're volunteering at? Has that happened for you, Mara? Um, well, I had in my placement, I had, you know, the supervisor who was for my placement, but no, I haven't had that yet. Um, I haven't had supervision, but who's, it's possible that it exists. I don't know, Jackie, you probably know more than me about that. So you... in some of the, some of the positions that I've had where we've had volunteers in as part of the volunteering program. We definitely offer supervision and support. So I think that can exist in some organisations and in some roles. And I think, as you're suggesting, Mara, good to go into a position with a clear idea of what you can offer and also asking questions about what you can potentially get out of it. So if that's something that's important to you, if you're trying to get practical experience in an industry, even for a short period of time, and there is the capacity for someone appropriate to supervise you for that particular project, or for the days or the hours that you are volunteering and getting practice hours as well, it's definitely worth asking. And if your direct line manager can't in that role, maybe there's someone else in the organisation who can, who could then become a mentor or a paid supervisor for you at some other point. So definitely worth asking. Can't, um, you're not always going to have every answer met in the way that you would ideally like, but you definitely won't get it answered positively if you don't ask it. So definitely worth checking. So thank you for all your questions and thank you again, Mara. Well, thank you again at the end, but really great to have had you here for this presentation and to have you share the important work that you've got out of doing volunteering and sharing that with others. Thank you for the opportunity that you've taken to connect in in our breakout rooms and to be part of the bigger discussion of some of the important learnings and insights and further questions that's come out of that as well. The opportunity I wanted to offer in a volunteering capacity is to join our support team. So we now have uh, applications open from today, just for three weeks, for you to be able to attend some of our free webinars that are normally paid as part of our calendar, to assist with some of our in-person training events, and to build networks, skills, opportunities to further your work or interests in the creative and expressive therapies. So if you're interested in finding out more about that or understanding what the application process would be, you can jump onto our website and I'll send you a link later on today with more details about how you could apply. And it's a very flexible um, support team position and you wouldn't be um, required to do anything that was beyond the scope of what you had time and energy for. So definitely check that out. We've had... Um, some amazing support people, uh, some of whom are here today and some of whom have been with us and then gone on into paid roles in our organisation too. So definitely um, check that out if you're interested in volunteering with Sydney Centre for Creative Change. We've also got a couple of paid events coming up that you may be interested in and available to attend. These are all live online training events. Peter Mortola is a fabulous uh, gestalt play therapist who worked very closely with Violet Oaklander for many years. And he's running a training, working with young people in groups coming up in a couple of weeks. It's a three-hour training. The fabulous Susan Perro is doing a three-day training, three half days in therapeutic storytelling. So if you use stories or could see some benefit in creating stories for and with some of the groups or the individuals you're working with therapeutically, this is a, a really lovely, very practical, hands-on training program. 
Tree of Life is a creative arts process for children, young people and adults and the amazing Kim Billington is running that three hour training. It's a, an art therapy process that's a directive process and really gives people a sense of hope and possibility beyond where they might be now. So I really encourage you to look into that if you haven't ever done that training. We've also got an online art therapy group that um, Adana Dean, uh, Jean is running for us. She was someone in our support team and she's been with us for a really long period of time. She's a psychologist now and she's a, a fabulous support person to run this art therapy program for us. So check that out. It's a five week online group and a really lovely self-paced opportunity to use art and, and creative media to reflect on your own process and to connect in with a lovely small supportive group. I've also got some places left for our July intake of our graduate certificate in play and art therapy. That's a 200 hour online course that goes for a year. So six months of training and six months of supervision that's part of included into that course. And if you're interested, um, I can send you details that also. So our next free event in this holding space series is happening on the 7th of June. And if you haven't yet registered and would like to, you can do that online now, the same way that you registered for this. And that's on Cocooned Care, Tailoring Successful Counselling Approaches for Teenagers. And um, the person running that is really skilled in this area and she's a really lovely presenter as well. So hopefully you can join us for that next one. Again, that's an hour and 15 minutes coming up on the 7th of June this year. And that will also be recorded. The advantage of registering is that you get emails not only with a login code to attend live, but you get... Um, as soon as the recording's available, you'll get notice of that so you can watch the recording and again, get a PD certificate on successful completion of the quiz after doing that. So we have an opportunity for you to win a $60 webinar right now. And this webinar is running live on the 1st of May. So it's coming up in a few weeks. It's an evening one from 7 to 8.30. So most of our shorter webinars are 90 minutes. And this one is Professor Sue Jennings, who's published all of those beautiful books for working with children but over I've lost count of how many publications she has in both articles and text she's a prolific author and she's a fabulous play and drama therapist and this webinar is on building children's attachment empathy and resilience so it's one of our popular ones that she runs she runs a few for us and she's a fantastic presenter too she's very experienced in the field and I would like to offer somebody the opportunity to uh, to attend that one so in order to win that live webinar, all you need to do is to be prepared to share out loud in the group in this recording one thing that you can do as a result of listening to this presentation today that is going to step your career forward. What's one practical application that you can do in the next week to action something that you've learned or considered or remembered today. So whenever you're ready to share that, the first person to write ready in the chat is going to win that. And Ellie, you're going to be watching out for that and let me know who that lucky ready person is and I'll get you to unmute. And yeah, wonderful, do. lots of people ready there. Um, but Kelly, you got in just a little bit first. So Kelly, would you like to unmute and tell us how you can action some of this today. Yeah, so um, I have volunteered in the past and have been working in a private practice. And I think um, I had kind of forgotten the benefits of volunteering. And one of the things as we were talking, um, you started to jog my, my mind of not just what I'm doing currently, but what I want to do in the future. So one of the things that I started doing was um, creating groups. I work a lot in the LGBT and gender diverse communities. And um, one of the practical things that immediately when you were talking hit me was I have a local headspace and I know that it is a perfect environment to um, go back to my roots and start uh, potentially offer to volunteer and LGBT support groups within headspace. And it's such a gift because it was so it's so available for me to do and it hadn't I had just hadn't even clicked that, that was something that was available for me to do and and it's a wonderful source because it is hard to connect uh with LGBT youth because they are not 
uh, necessarily wanting to come forward as often and um, and also accessing their families and and the support that you can so yeah it was a it was one of those light bulb moments uh, as you were speaking I thought my goodness why have I not you know done that um, yeah so I uh, very very appreciative because yeah, I think we can get a bit stuck in, in our day to day and trying to keep a practice alive and all the marketing and all the other side of things. And yeah, so anyway, that's, that's my practical uh, takeaway. And that's what I'm planning to do uh, when we finish here. Fabulous. That's great to hear. Mara's giving you a big thumbs up and wonderful, Kelly. What a great initiative. Please yeah, think how that goes. Even in our Facebook yeah. group, if you wanted to comment, we'd love to see some of the outcomes of that for you personally and for your business as well. So good Yeah, on. thank you so much. Excellent. We'll be in contact later today about how you can access that, that free training. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries at all. So thank you all so much for being here. Can you please join me in giving Mara a big virtual round of applause in whatever way works for you? And um, thank you all for being here and participating so fully and actively and meaningfully in this training today.